You are listening to The Real Men Feel Show with Andy Grant. Real Men Feel encourages men to allow and express all of their emotions. Despite what you may have been taught, all emotions do serve you. Real Men Feel is committed to engaging in discussions that most men aren't having. All links mentioned in each episode are in the show notes found on the blog at realmenfeel.org. Now, let's get into this week's show. Hello and welcome to another edition of Real Men Feel. This is your host, Andy Grant. And today we have, I believe it's my fourth regular guy chat. And it's the final regular guy chat and actually the final show for 2019. So I'm I'm very excited that we have uh, come to the end of another year and another great season of Real Men Feel. It's it's felt great to me. Uh, I don't know what you have thought, but uh, everyone I've heard from has has felt the same way. And we had some really strong shows to... uh, in the back half of, of 2019. But my guest today is a friend, a husband, a father of two, and a doctor of chiropractic, a licensed chiropractor in the state of Massachusetts. Please welcome Tim Mizicki. No, I butchered it. I did it. No, no I, you, did, you did it I well. I did it right? Yeah, you did it well. Tim Mizicki, uh, you heard it. It's an right. overwhelming name, but it's, it's, I know, it'll grow on you. We'll it is. On it. And anyone watching, you know, it's, it's, it's on the screen under, under Tim is his full name. And yeah, it's, it's an intimidating name. And I realize that I've, I've known you for, I think, a year and a half. I think it's got to be more. Be than longer that. than that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, right. maybe two. Maybe but two. I, I never even attempted to say your last name until just now. So, so even saying it right, I felt like right. it was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> the timing right. just wasn't right, Andy. But yeah. I'm glad we did it now on air. I mean, what better place to do it but with yeah. everyone else watching you? Great. And, and I want to... Um, Recently, we were in Toronto and at a restaurant, and it was a, a had a Polish waitress who gave you kind of a lesson in your own name, and sounded yeah. like she was saying it in a different manner as well. Exactly, so. she had to school me on my own last name. I thought I was saying, I don't even know if I can even reproduce what she was teaching me, but uh, no, yeah, there, there was a she had a lot more to it than how we're saying it in America. <laughs> yeah, that was for sure. This goes to show you, there's always improve, there's always improvement that we can do in our lives, right? Yep, yep, yeah, cool. So. Yeah, you know, as I said, Tim's a friend, and and we have traveled uh, a number of times, done some road trips together, and actually stayed in Airbnbs together. And what I witnessed in you is why I wanted you to come on and, and talk. Cool. Um, I was struck, and still am struck, by the priority you put on communicating with your children. You checked in, I think, certainly daily, sometimes multiple times a day. You know, checking in, doing FaceTime with you have a, a son and a daughter. Sometimes yeah. you would connect with just one of them, sometimes both of them. Yeah. And and again, I was impressed with the amount of time you gave them, no matter what was going on in your busy schedule, and how much they seem to appreciate it, welcome. It was like, oh crap, dad's calling me. You know, it didn't I didn't feel that um during the brief times that I would see the connection start. Right. So cross your fingers, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So is, is that how you operate all the time, even from the office? Will you kind of check in and see them during the day? Or is it because you were traveling? Or, or what, what prompts that? Yeah, man, that's, um, that, that's, that's a big part of my life. That's, that's, and I didn't realize this is awesome. I mean, I didn't realize this is part of, the, part of the reason why you were pulling me on. I had no idea why you were pulling me on. Today. <laughs> this is really cool. Um, yeah, like, that 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 is that is my everyday thing so even like like i'm here in my office right now when i'm doing chiropractic care with individuals and i'm psyched that my daughter is 12 and she now has an iphone and my son has an ipod and we can we can text each other to to stay in contact i mean this you think about them all the time at least i do my my wife and i uh it was a common goal from when we first got together and we started dating that we both knew we wanted a family and that was a priority to us and uh and just from that point forward, I mean, you just find yourself every time you're making a decision, any decision, it's like, all right, well, is this going to benefit my family and how so, and how will it impact them? Um, so, yeah. So I can tell you that, that I, I, I love, it, it fuels me to be able to con- connect with my kids in any way. And I'm, so, I'm grateful for the, the FaceTime, like when I go to Toronto mm-hmm. with you and to, to be able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So is the conscious choice to, to build that connection, to keep that going. Is that something that you grew up with as a recipient? Mm, yeah, my parents were amazing, amazing parents and always had that connection. Even with my dad, uh, there was, he had to work. There was, there was a time when we were younger, my dad was working a ton 
But yet, if I ever called him at his office, and this is, geez, like even pre-mobile phones, like he'd have a pager or something like that. And if I had the slightest problem with something at home, how do I get the lawnmower started or something like that? My dad was awesome. He'd be so busy at work, but he'd take the time and, and, and uh, he'd be there for me. My mom was just always, always around, God bless her. And, and they've always been like that. So even now I'm in my, you know, upper thirties and my father, you know, unfortunately my mom passed away last year, but my dad to this day, it's like, dad, I need something. Or I give him a quick call. It's like, Hey, you're busy. No, what do you need? What do you, what do you want? And whatever, he's right there for me. So I guess I've always had that. It's kind of been built in and I valued that. And uh, it just felt important for me to keep that going with my kids. Cool. Cool. Yeah. yeah the, uh, so, so I do not have children, but the majority of, of dads I talk to, they either raise their children kind of the exact opposite of their experience because they're kind of trying to kind of fix some patterns that they didn't appreciate, or they really do model, uh, you know, the great, the great things that happen from there. Yeah. So it really yeah. seems like you're, so you're a, you're a modeler when it comes to fatherhood. Oh, for sure. And you know what? And there's things of, I mean, there's, there's, I'm, I'm a certain way with my kids as, as, as a dad. And I'm obviously I'm not perfect either. I would hope that if they chose to have kids, they would want a, a strong connection and they're going to find ways to do things even better than what I'm doing now. You know what I mean? And that's just what my parents told me too. <laughs> so that's just really what you're going for. How can we make it better each generation? Cool. Yeah. So are, are you consciously aware of, is, is there any, any way the world is that you would like to see changed or emphasized or less emphasized when it comes time for your children to have their own families? That's a good question. So in some way, I want to see it change. You know, the pace, I think, I don't know if I need to see necessarily anything change, but I, it's been part of my goal to instill them having the connection with me as the, with, with that, that, that parent child relationship, because we've all felt it and we've all heard it a ton, how fast and fast and fast that, faster this this the pace of this world is going um and i think it's becoming easier to lose connection human connection with each other especially where you know we always have these little mini computers and we're always looking down and doing things um i just hope that we have we over time we're continuing to instill the importance with our kids that that human connection there's so much that that we learn i mean not even just them learning from me but me as the father learning from them you know it's a reflection back on the, anything that i'm doing like oh geez i gotta do this differently um so i don't know just at the dinner table or almost any time you're at the table having a meal like no laptops no cell phones like put that away no social media we'll put on some music but we want to connect so i i guess if they chose to have children, my son, he's 10, he's already talking like he wants kids. My daughter, she hasn't said much about it yet, but that's fine, she's only 12. Uh, you know, they choose to have kids, I, I would hope that they hold on to that connection. It's huge, I mean, any type of growth that, or healing that any one of us have, we need to have that connection with each other. You know, you and I have been doing a lot of reading and such, separation of any kind is just not the way to be. We gotta be growing together and connecting together. Um, so I try to enforce that now, please, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled that you pulled me on this, this, this podcast for this topic, by no means am I saying I'm perfect that I have it all figured out because, uh, I feel like almost daily, I, you know, you go through something, you kind of inventory, you're like, oh, geez, I wish I could have done that differently, or I should probably do that differently. So, you know, you feel like you're doing something great and you kind of go off course and you're like, oh, bring yourself back to the middle. Then you go this way. No, too far again. Bring yourself back here. It's like it's a daily game for me. Yeah. And again, like uh, in, in my experience and working with clients, that's how you find out what's great. Mm. Right. You, you've got to be not great from time to time to realize, oh, wait, it, it's this stuff that matters. Yeah. And it, it's here's how everything flows best for me. That's a good point. I mean, you yeah. got to figure out when you're making your choices and your actions and how things unravel and the product of it. It's like, all right, I didn't like the way that turned out at all. So let's do this differently. Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. I like that. Yeah. It's a good cool. point. And so obviously connection is, is important to you as a parent. Um, what else is kind of top of mind that, that, you know, really is, is fueling your decisions as, as a dad? This was something. So, you know, I'm in my upper thirties now and I can tell you, I've had memories as early as when I was 12 years old, that younger, no, I'd say younger. Um, 
I've wanted to have a family. I wanted to be a dad. I wanted to have kids. And there was, I couldn't, I don't know if I could necessarily put it in words back then, but there was something important to me about, you know, planting these seeds in our world and raising them to somehow just be as awesome as they can be for themselves. But then also like just, I, I saw it as a way of, of helping to make the world one step better. You know, if you can put some human beings, plant the seeds of these human beings in, I know it sounds kind of ridiculous, into the world and you have them grow into be these beings of love and light and not just for the world themselves, but even for them. I just, I saw a lot of good in that. I'd have dreams about that. And, and uh, that was always important to me. And, you know, you're talking at least 12 years old or younger. So it was kind of a, um, that was, it was weird of like when you're growing up, I mean, you know, we've all been teenagers. You have boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, and, and your relationships come and go. And that was always weird because that was always a value that I took very, very seriously. But I knew in the back of my head, like, all right, Tim, you're, you know, you have a girlfriend and you're 14, 15 years old, like just chill out for the moment. This isn't going to be something that's going to be necessarily a value of theirs. Um, so you'd hold it in the back. And although ironically though, when I met my wife, um, she and I, it was a year that we weren't necessarily planning to get together or, you know, or, or get connected, have a relationship, but we both realized the importance that we both shared in that. So it was kind of like an aha moment. So, um, but yeah, that's always been something that's been important, planting those, those seeds into the world. Yeah. Ooh. You know, I, I think what caught my attention and focus and had me so impressed with, with you as, as a dad is that that is like, yeah, it is the exact opposite of my experience as a child. Like I, I was younger than your son when I said, nope, my seeds are crap. I don't want to pass this on. I don't want anyone else to, to live my family's lineage of, of, you know, alcoholism and addiction and mental illness. And I was like, this ends now. Um, yeah. So it's really cool to hear someone just really honestly talk about, I want to plant my seed. You know, I want to grow <laughs> beings of love and light. Like uh, I have, I just, that is not my experience. And I don't meet people that, that speak like that. So uh, I can't, you know what? And I can't blame certain individuals if they've had some heartache as a child. I, I don't know what that's like. You know, I was really blessed to have a home that was filled with love. I don't necessarily blame anybody coming up with that, that feeling. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, I, there's, there are some people I used to say I'm, that if somebody made the conscious decision to not necessarily procreate and have a child, I would still respect that opinion for whatever reason. They don't feel like at that time that they're the, the I felt like there was just a lot of responsibility that came with that decision. And I, and I respected that for sure. Um, you know, I, I, there was a, uh, Lord, my wife, Lori and I were, were part of, uh, when was it? I think it was, a, I think it was more than 10 years ago where you just looked, all of our friends are starting to have kids and it was like taking away from our social lives. Like, well, what do we do? There's gotta be people that like don't have kids. So we found there's, there's a, a, a national group called no kidding. No way. And it's for people, it's for couples or individuals that don't have kids and go to movies and go out to dinners. And we got involved with them and we went to a few events and we, I think we even did even like uh, some reporters, we got interviewed about it and stuff. But anyway, there were some people that were like, like militant and like, no one should be having children. And they call like, it was, they call them breeders. Oh, good. You're not a breeder. Don't be a breeder. What like, were their reasons? Wow. Why, why, why would they say that? Yeah, just a really cynical, the world is bad. We, we're destroying the planet. Yeah, like all, yeah. All, but really, uh, it, it felt to me like a really mightier, holier than thou kind of like, I've decided that no one should be breeding. And it just like, oh, wow. Yeah. So they really were, were, again, taking a personal decision, which is fine, but really... Yeah trying to force others to agree with it. And then other people, it's like, I don't have, I just don't have kids looking for people to hang out with. Like, great. You so know, and I, let me ask you a question. You said when you, you and Lori said there was a point when you noticed all your friends started having kids. I mean, approximately what age are we talking about? Oh, probably. Uh, yeah. Mid thirties. I'm trying to, I, I'm running through like everyone I still hang out with from, from high school and college. Um, I can, I can just think of like two of my friends that don't have kids. Wow. So just the, yeah, the couples we would hang out with, the people we'd go, uh, just, yeah, just locally. I um, always wanted to like travel internationally. We've done a lot of traveling and we could never find 
another couple to come with no us because they free kept, to do it with you. Yeah, right? they, kept, yeah. they kept breeding. <laughs> <laughs> Those damn breeders. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was I. I had forgotten all about that group in that time in, until we were talking about this. But uh, yeah, so there, I mean, it just proves there's there's a group, there's a subset, there's a culture around. Everything. I, had, I had no idea that 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 group existed. I mean, clearly, I'm not meant to be in the group. <laughs> yeah, they would hate me, but right. that's, I find that very surprising. That's crazy. People that passionate about it, huh? Yeah, yeah. And I'd love to, yeah, go maybe I'll, uh, look for some research on that group and see how many people just like, you know, leave it and have kids. But did yeah, you, did you join more. that group, or were you just like a visitor seeing the group? No, I, there was no like, uh, there was no initiation or ritual to be a member. But yeah, we uh, there probably, you know, maybe just six months max. Because it was always in Boston, and we, we, we don't live in the city, so most people did. So it was like, hey, oh, join so they, us. they had a physical location? Um, well, they were, most of their meetings were really like downtown and doing things or a meeting. short notice. Oh, wow. I should call it that. Yeah, every – it just got together. And it okay. did start with some sort of news and meeting, but it wasn't just uh, – the, the meeting wasn't the point of gathering. It was a gathering that had some meeting elements. Does that make sense? <laughs> <laughs> did you find that group helped you at all in any way? Yeah, it was neat. Just again, I, I, and it's funny. I didn't, I didn't think I liked meeting people. That was still the time I like. Ah, I don't like most people. It was all. It was all. I didn't like me. But I did like some people. And just again, anytime that I like, anytime that people get together when nobody knows anyone else, and they're just more willing to have conversations and ask questions and see what's up. So cool. that, that I like that about it. Okay, find some commonalities with somebody else. Yeah. And this way, if you and Lori wanted to go travel, you could post to that group because you know they have no kids. Yeah. Hey, who right. wants to come along? Yeah. No, no anchors, ball right. and chain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just lots of balls and no chains or no chains. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure who is the ball and chain. If it's, <laughs> but <laughs> you keep stressing that you're not perfect, and I think perfection is overrated. But mm. but what do you th what do you think makes a great dad? That's a loaded question. <laughs> what do I think makes a great dad? <laughs> I. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can tell you what I think has served me well in, 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 in my opinion of myself as a father. Um, I think patience is a big thing. I think patience is a big thing. Um, I do feel that's one of my strengths. And of, of course, no, I have my moments of impatience, but I think patience is a big thing because it's so funny. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard there's there's some, there's a quote somewhere and I'll, I'll paraphrase something. It's like, you know, parents always think that they are there to teach their children when in actuality children are really the biggest teachers for the parents. Um, so I think sometimes we go walking into parenthood thinking like, all right, well, I'm in my twenties, I'm in my thirties, I'm in my forties. I mean, whenever you decide to start having kids and uh, I got it together and I got this little one, the seed for the earth and let's start guiding them. And so many times you realize that these kids become <laughs> reflections of whatever you're doing, whatever you're saying, your habits. Um, so if you're open to that, sometimes that can be a pain in the butt because you see the kids doing something, saying something like, oh, damn, I know why I see that in me or I see that in my wife and, and it can, it's, it's complicated action. So patience is a big thing because uh, when you're a parent, especially when you're a parent, you realize that I, I found I've, I've grown more as a parent. You're, you're, your children show you things about yourself and uh, you know, do you want to change it or not? So that can be uncomfortable. I mean, you and I both know we've done a lot of different things with, with growth and such and growth can be very uncomfortable. Patience is huge. The child is going through all these other developmental stages and having patience with them. So patience would be number one. Um, would that be number one? Cause I'd be kind of from love too. Yeah. I don't know. Patience, love, and communication. I'll say there are two moments in my life that um, before being a parent, there was one moment before being a parent, one when I was a very, very early parent. Um, what made a difference for me, you know, you and I have both seen situations where we've seen sons and daughters not think too highly of their parents for whatever reason. Um, and one time, pre-fatherhood, I was at a wedding with my wife. Friends were getting married. And I recall seeing this family, um, the Dennis family, super, super sweet family, two daughters and one son. And I remember seeing the, the mother and the father at their table at the, at the wedding, and I was off in the distance. And at one point, the oldest daughter comes over, the older daughter comes over, she's in her 
mid twenties. She comes down, she sits on her dad's lap. She wraps her hands around him and she kisses him on the cheek and they're just talking and they're laughing and they're talking. I'm like, Oh, that's really cool. Then she gets up, she leaves and the other daughter comes over and that daughter sits down. Like it does like the same thing with the father sits down, wraps her hands around him, kisses him. And they start having another conversation. I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then they have a son. And then the son comes over and I see him put both of his arms around his mom and his dad. And he's, you know, what college age at this point. Um, and he's just like chatting with them and gives them hugs and kisses. I'm like, that is amazing. You have these grown adults and look at the love and the sharing. Like that's, that's incredible. And I walk over to them like, how do you do that? You know, I don't, I'm not a father yet. How do you create something like that? That's amazing. And they stress the importance of communication and patience. That was one thing he, he I, I talked to the father about it, communication and patience. Um, and then being a young father, I was in my first, one of my first jobs in a laboratory and a mom, she had, you know, her 18 year old and her 16 year old children. And she would talk about how they, these kids would get into moments and the mom was right there for them. And she never held any judgment. She was there to help them, try to have them understand consequences and punishment, but not just condemn, condemn, condemn. And again, like I'd see her parent, uh, her kids come into the lab at times to visit the mom and they'd hug her and kiss. I'm like, what is this? I mean, we hear so many stories. Unfortunately, we hear so many stories of like teenagers, like hating the parents and the parents, you know, despise being around the teenagers because it's just such a painful resisting moment. There's so much anguish there. And yet you see that some of these parents and their kids and there's so much love. And the biggest thing she talked about was communication. And she's talked about an example, having her daughter go to a party and there was a lot of drinking involved and things went south really fast at the party, a whole bunch of underage drinking. And the daughter actually had the courage and the trust to call up her mom. Mom didn't know what was going on ahead of time. And she called up her mom and, and uh, had the mom come pick her up. And there was a safety net there. And there was a love and a trust. And the mother didn't come down on the daughter. But afterwards, there was some communication and how to best handle it. It was moments like that for me. I'm like, all right, when I got my kids, got to be able to communicate, got to trust. I, wanna be able, my, I want my kids to be able to hug me and love me when we're you know, God forbid I'm 80s, 90s, and, and, and I'm still living strong and my kids are doing awesome too. I want them to come still hug me and kiss me and do all those things and tell me that they love me and I love them. And you don't, you don't see enough of that. I mean, do you, I don't know, what's been your experience when you see other parents and children? Do you see that? No, yeah. it, it is rare. And, and again, what's striking me, you know, we call this, you know, the regular guy chat and you keep showing me that, boy, I think you're, the epitome, what, what I hope regular guys, you know, strive for, but your openness, welcoming and wanting of, of love. And yeah. you can verbalize that. And even more than verbalizing it, pre uh, parenthood, you can see it. And you're like, Hey, how are you doing this? Like you're, you're inquiring, you're, you're like investigating how, how can I create what I'm seeing in my life? Whereas I think so many men like, like, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, and the son, too. Oh, geez, what's wrong with them? You know, people, you, it's like you, you, hmm, you have it no walls wait, around that, your heart. That, thank you for saying that. That's, that's very kind of you to say. But you know what? Like, isn't that where it starts? If, if we want this world to be a better place, and if certain, if, if certain ones of us feel like we should be parents, if we want to make the world a better place, I mean, takes love, right? And so let's start, how do, all right, you see like that great demonstration of love between that parent and daughter and that parent and son. Holy hell, how do I do that? Because if I can start having this connection of love, imagine what they're going to do when they go on with their spouses or their, their fellow coworkers or whatever. Um, that's what I want. That's exactly what I want. Thank you for saying that was really kind of you to say. Yeah. Uh, cool. I'm, I'm just mirroring back what I see. <laughs> But, uh, and, and again, it, it, it's, I know plenty of guys that have kids and, to, you know, to call it a mistake is, is, is silly, but, but certainly unplanned. Sure. And I remember the first friend who admitted to me that he had his first child and was shocked that he didn't feel anything. He was waiting for that magic moment of, oh, wow, my life is different. He was just like, so what? 
Mm. And he's shared that, you know, I, I wish I didn't have kids. Mm. And, you know, I was uh, saddened and horrified, but also yeah. glad that he was willing to say that out loud to me. And I don't know if he'd shared it with other Good people point. or not. Yeah, just to have but, that awareness. But yeah, just to have that, again, it's bravery on a different level. Um, and it's really what this show is about. Like, you know, I'm not, we're not, you were right. We're not telling people how to feel. Just like, hey, right. you feel, and it, you please share it and don't keep it inside. And, you know, I believe that when people share kind of the blocks and the crap behind that is the love, is wanting to see more of that, experience that. But again, it's not universal. So uh, this is what stood out to me from, from you, the, that your uniqueness, your open heartedness, your authenticity of wanting to make better people um, from yourself, from, from who you choose to bring and grow in this world. And, and yeah. you know, you're, and you're even the, your investigativeness, your curiosity of how, how to keep doing that. It, it's not just... You know, it's not just modeling how you were raised. Like you're, you're looking for even more information. You're, you're asking the experts that you come across. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like um, the other way to look at it would be, well, no, we'll just put it this way. If there's ever some place you want to be in your life, whether it's, I don't know, business or some kind of growth or whatever, you look at the people who are doing where it is you want to go and you ask them, right? So that's, 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 that's been a, a, a tool a mode that I, I like to do. And, and when I see somebody, it's like, wow, like, look at you rock on this right now as a parent. The hell are you doing? How did you make that happen? And it's different at each stage of the game. Um, my kids are 10 and 12 now. And thankfully, you know, they're, as they're entering the preteen to teen years, they're still wanting to hug mom and dad. Um, I got to respect if sometime they want to take a pause on that for their teenage years. I have to respect that and let's honor that. But no, that's, and there's, there's always growth and learning. Let me ask you, um, cause I want to say something. What, what age, like with your listeners, do you know, like what's kind of the middle age group the, or the general age of people listening to this? Is this people like in their, their like my age in mid thirties that goes up to early fifties or I don't know if that's something you're. Yeah, no. Um, I mean, listening is a pretty, anonymous yeah, thing i know because you get so you really, and you i'm get sure there are analysts i could listening. look at but yeah and um honestly i i i don't care i i trust okay. that it reaches to what it reaches so just you know speak, what yeah. speak your yeah. truth and let, let me just it. say because i you know when i when i heard um when i heard what you had shared with your friend who who had his child and didn't necessarily feel anything um i wouldn't i didn't that's a fear, I think, for a lot of fathers is your, 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 your wife, your girlfriend, whomever is pregnant, you're about to have a family, and here you are, you're seeing your, your, that, that female counterpart. Like for me, it was my wife, and there, she's growing with and connecting with this baby in utero, this, this some other energy. It's like, wow. It's like, but as a father, you don't quite have that. So you're kind of worried, like, the hell am I going to feel? Like, what's going on right now? And um, for anybody who's listening, because that was a concern of mine is a, um, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A father in the making, you know, when you have a, a baby in the oven. Um, that, that was a concern of mine. And to just counteract what it was you had just mentioned with your friend's experience, it was like the exact opposite for me when I can remember there, there, the three greatest moments uh, so far in my life, number one, has been being married to my wife without question. But then number two, you know, I don't know if this is even greater than the marriage because for us it was the step towards this direction. So it's all kind of together. When she birthed our children, it was like, it was magic. It was amazing to see the woman that you love so much create this human being. And then like our daughter came out, our first child and time just stood still. And I remember like for us, we did two home births and we had uh, midwives all around us. Um, well, on the first one, we had a team of midwives and she, my wife was really adamant about having, you know, the females of the family around us, the female energy is supportive, which is really cool. Uh, but we had a tub in the living room and I remember being in the heated tub with my wife and our daughter came out. And even though there were, I felt like a lot of people around us, but they're all people we love. So it was fine. When my daughter came out, it's like, they all just disappeared. 
And I've never experienced anything like that before where it's like we were just in a tunnel and it was just the three of us, my wife, my daughter, and me, nobody else. And it was, I mean, ask my wife, it was a long birth process she went through. She's such a warrior for doing it. But like all of a sudden just time stood still and it was the three of us and you just felt this incredible connection it immediately brought tears to my eyes and it was one of the the most beautiful experiences i could have gone through as a human and it really is like an initiation of of it by itself it was beautiful um and then you know just to put it to the next step then we have our son and then i have everything like such high expectations like oh my gosh like what if this set we didn't we didn't know if it was a boy or girl for either the children my my wife uh, like to use it as fuel for the birthing process to figure it out. So she didn't want to know ahead of time. It was cool. I like that. Um, yeah. So then our, our son, she was pregnant with our son. And I don't remember if I voiced this to her, but it was an inner concern for me. It's like, well, damn, what if the second kid comes out son, daughter, I don't know. And like, I don't feel as much love for that son. Like what the hell does that, uh, that's not going to be right for this, this child. And, and, uh, but it was totally different. And like, you still felt this incredible love and connection, but you could just tell it was a different energy. I and mean, he's a totally different person, a totally different being than my daughter. So I wanted to throw that out there, you know, for those, maybe you have some parents or uh, individuals who are going to become parents. They know they're listening to this or they're thinking about it. It was just one of the coolest, most magical processes I've ever experienced in my life. You know, to this day, my wife has been, uh, the most beautiful than when she, the most beautiful she's been is what I'm trying to say was when she was pregnant in, in birthing our children. Just incredible. Just mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. So I want to throw that out there just to counter if, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. And that, that, that is a beautiful story. I've, I had, uh, you know, chills while you were talking about that, that home birth experience. That's uh, very cool. Are you aware of how you learned what it means to be a man? You know what? No. And well, am I aware? I obviously I could say I learned some from my father because see that that guy has modeled some really amazing qualities, but I still feel like I have I don't know, I have a lot to learn. I mean, you I think this is I'm excited to learn of your show too, because what does it mean to be a man in this world? What does it mean to have that masculinity? What does it mean to balance that with, you know, the feminine counterpart of you and your significant other? I don't know. I don't know. I'm learning. Um, I'm excited to learn of your show. And this has been a newer thing as you and I started talking more about this, um, especially when I see, man, you have a lot of episodes. There's a lot to dive into here and start learning. And so I'm excited for that. Um, but no, I don't, I, I don't know if I know what it means to be a man. I just know what it means to live from your heart and what feels right. Is that, is that a fair answer? It, it, whatever your answer is, <laughs> is a fair answer. Okay. That's good. Then that's, that's what it is yeah. right now. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. No. And uh, you know, some, some guys I talk to are, are conscious and like had a father or a big brother or, you know, someone in their life that really went out of the way and taught them like lessons of, of manhood. Yeah. And this is what it means. And other people like, oh, I have no idea. I'm just like winging it. Or, you know, it was more from movies and pop culture. Right. Um, but again, you're, I, I don't know. I know in pop culture, I, 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 as a whole, I think men have a lot to learn um, in terms of what it means to be a man. And, and what, what do I mean by that? I, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that there's an imbalance and I don't know how long it's been going on for, but I do feel like there's an imbalance where us men, and this has been a newer thing. I know you've talked about on your show and we've heard it at other places. It's, it's not safe for us to express our emotions, to show compassion, to open our hearts. There's such a warrior side to being a man. And, um, you know, I think it's really been an imbalance energetically for men. I think it's been an imbalance for how men and women interact with each other. Um, I think there's a lot of healing that has to go on. And I think that men could, we, we myself included, need to learn, like, what does it mean to, all right, we're so strong warrior like and, and in terms of severity, but what does it mean in terms of love and compassion and mercy and, and having that balanced out? And I think, I don't know, I think we need to explore that more because I bet if we did, we'd see a nice shift. Cool. There's so much and I was even, it's, 
I even had a conversation about this with my father last week. Um, and it's interesting because this is just coming up now. And here we are having this video podcast. But, um, you know, my, when my dad was raised, it wasn't like the I love you. Something as simple as saying I love you. This is, I'm, I didn't ask for his permission to share this, but dad, I, I hope it's okay if you hear this. Um, you know, it wasn't necessarily something that was shared within his family, even though, um, even though he's like, you know, I know my mom and my dad loved me and his dad worked crazy amount of hours to make things happen for the love, to, for the family, for the success. The mother did lots of things uh, to support the family, whether it's around the house or whatever. And so he knows that the sense of love was there, but it, it wasn't always something that was shared um, until something later in his life. And, and you know, that, I'm grateful that he shared that. And I'm grateful that um, because of him and because of him making that different decision with his kids to say, I love you more and to express it, that's something we've been able to benefit more from. And I know that it's something, it's weird. It's something that I felt like I've, I was always sensitive to as a guy and uh, not, I wanted to make sure with my kids, like from the moment they were born, always tell them that they love them. And probably sometimes maybe they'll tell you, I say it too much. But uh, I, I think that's something that that expression of love is super important. I think that's just a baby step that we can take as guys. Um, I, I don't know how important that is. It just felt important to say. No, I, 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 I trust that always. Um, you mentioned that you were sensitive to that. And I just wanted to get clarification of that. So as a guy, you were sensitive to not asking for love or concerned about phrasing it? Or what, what, what was that about? I was sensitive to... I never really considered myself a guy's guy, a man's man. You know what I mean? Um, whether it was in school, high school, whatever, and, and real tough guys. And that was just, that was never quite me. If anything, that actually kind of pushed me away. And I was like, well, you know, I'm, I, yeah, there's got to be an element of tough guy. But I was always sensitive, like, I never really see you guys like showing like you care for each other. And it doesn't have to be like, hey, bro, I love you. You don't have to do that all the time. I mean, that, maybe that might be a little weird for some guys at first. But, um, I just felt like there was, I was sensitive to the fact that um, when I say man's man, yeah, because I, 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 I don't want to put anybody else down, but that tough guy and never expressing love or compassion or helping somebody out or mercy. Um, and that was just something I wanted to do differently. Don't know why, just felt important to me. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I've, uh, you know, I, it, it, a, a past clients just pop into my mind. It, this is about like eight years ago. And, you know, he's in, tuning into his energy and he was talking about difficulties in his life. And I said, Oh, you just, you've got to, and like, I, I, I see brick walls around your heart. And the only way to take those down is to tell people you love them. And he starts laughing. I'm like, what, what, what's, what's so funny about that? He's like, I'm a bricklayer. And I didn't know that. <laughs> and he's like, and if I told, if I told my friends that I love them, they, they would think I'd lost my mind. I'm like, well, do you want to do you want to have people think you have a great mind and you're all closed in and walled up, or you want to break down the freaking walls? So, so did he try doing it? Do you know? Did he I try saying that to one of his guys? I do not know. He, uh, I think that might have been interesting. Yeah, he he didn't return. His his wife he pressured didn't return. him. His wife pressured him to talk to me, and yeah. So I don't like it resonated. Like I, he, but I don't. Yeah, at least I'm pretty sure in that that week I don't think he changed anything. Like did he over time? I don't know. Yeah, maybe a seed was planted. Who knows, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But yeah, there is so much. Uh, and that, I mean, the name of this program, it was playing with uh, just, well, what, instead of the tough guy and the man's man, what if real men felt? That's all. It's just, you know, I was asking myself that question and, and it just stuck for this. Um, and again, even going back to fatherhood, <clears throat> I feel like that was another important lesson for me when you're um, raising, when, I, when I'm raising my kids, because now I have one boy and one girl. And I felt like it's, it's important for me to try to model as best as I can um, a man and being loving, compassionate in, in ways in which we don't see a lot of men today. I wanted to make sure that for my daughter, you know, um, whoever she chooses to be with, uh, she chooses to be with, with a, a man that she's, that she's used to being with a guy who's shown her love and compassion where it's, it's balanced. Because I feel like if, if I were to show an imbalanced um, demonstration. I mean, that's only gonna affect her and her upbringing. 
however, whoever she chooses to be with. And from my son, it's like, all right, well, whoever you choose to be with, this is how you're going to treat other people. This is how you're going to treat your significant other. Um, and so, yeah, bringing it back to the fatherhood. It's, I think that was probably the main, the main purpose for doing it. Cool. And you're kind of speaking about it very analytically and, oh, I want this to be their experience, so I should behave this way. Mm -hmm. in, in your day-to-day -day moment, is that going on or is it more just you, you're just trusting and following your heart? Well, I think I'm trusting and following my heart. You know, you kind of step back, you have an analytical, uh, I don't know, you have a moment you step back like, All right, what, kind of, what kind of father am I right now? What kind of father am I being? And, and especially like if a situation just happened and if you weren't, the most pleased with how maybe you handled the situation with your son or daughter or child. You have that moment you step back and like, damn, how did I do that? And how could that impact them? And what, what, what did I just show them? What did I just teach them? So I think it's a balance between the analytics and the feeling. That's kind of what I've, what I've been doing. So maybe, maybe I've been coming off very analytical as you and I talk right now. Um, but there's definitely a, a feeling, a heart that goes with it. You know, what's it telling you and going with that? Cool. At least in my experience, that's what I do. Cool. Good. Cool. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine how it could be only analytic. like it, it's hard to analytically only I'm spreading love, you know, with my analysis of how it. How can you like, do that? It, right? right. Yeah. You're not even yeah. using your heart that way. Right. right. Yeah, right. exactly. Cool. Exactly. So when, whenever I have kind of a, whenever I'm talking to anybody, I always ask if there's a, a habit, a book, a program, anything that has benefited you that you would like to share with others. Um, it could be about fatherhood, just about being a man, being, being a, a good person, just anything that stands out to you that, that you want to pass on? Great question. Um, yeah, I mean, I've read different books. Um, oh, man, there's one book. My mother had given it to me uh, on a Father's Day. I can't remember the name of it. It's over there somewhere. I'm not going to break the interview for, this, for that purpose. Um, yeah, I mean, I've read books and you'd feel like it was important to do uh, read the book. Like once I realized we had a daughter, it's like, all right, how to be a father to a daughter and uh, how to be a father to a son and, and model that for them. No, I can't say there's really been one in particular, one book, one seminar, one whatsoever. The, the biggest for me is I've, I've really been blessed to have two parents that they've been very loving and very supportive. And I think that really helped lay a huge foundation. Um, and, just from there, of course, I'm always doing different things to try to explore and be better. But no, there's, I don't really have one book. I don't really have. So maybe that's not that helpful to the listeners or viewers. <laughs> I say trust your heart, trust your heart, and then just find ways to open up your heart if you feel like certain parts are closed. That's the only thing I can say. Cool. Is that is that is that helpful at all? Sure. Yeah. Sure. It uh, you know, people don't have to run out and buy a book that you mentioned, so that you've helped you've helped them, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying. Uh, cause no, there, there have been helpful books and yeah. each person's going to find a way. It's like, damn, I really suck in doing this. Well, then you know what? Go find a book or go, go talk with somebody who's really great at doing that. You don't have to suck so much at it anymore. Right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything top of mind that you wish more men knew? Great question. In regard to, in regards to the topic at hand, what we're discussing you know, love. We don't always have to be the tough guys. There are certain situations where we feel like with our kids, we got to be super tough and super militant all the time. And, um, you know, whether you think you're balanced with that or not, maybe because in our world, there's so lack of compassion and heart and mercy we could try opening up a little bit and just kind of see the fruits of the labor of, of hey if i just handle the situation my child like this what's going to happen and it's it's weird because it's a way of letting your guard down it's definitely letting your guard down right i mean i'm sure i know you, you've talked about this you open up your heart you become more vulnerable um the more vulnerable you can become i, I think that, that 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 hands down a whole nother lesson to your child i think the biggest thing is especially when you realize you've done wrong as a parent, just going back and telling your kid you're sorry. I think there's a big le lesson in mercy and compassion right there, you know, saying you're sorry. Um, I found so far the greatest amount of power when I've done something, I've acted too quickly. Because, it, yeah, man, it happens and it's not fun. When you react, and like, damn it, why did I say that? Or why did I do that? Or why did I 
create this punishment or whatever. Then you go back, you're like, hey guys, look, I screwed up. You know, dad's not perfect. I'm a human. I'm still learning and I'm sorry. And if I could do it differently, if I, if I could have done that differently in the past, I wish I could go back in time, but I can't. So I don't know. Asking them for forgiveness has been a very powerful thing for me. It's something that I've discovered. Um, that's what I would hand down. That's what I would say. Cool. Yeah. What are you proud of? The two kids that my wife are raising. I mean, we're talking about, do you want to talk, is it about fatherhood or outside of fatherhood? You know, my kids are awesome. I'm proud of my kids. And of course I'm going to be biased. I'm going to be a dad, but I think my wife and I are doing a great job at raising them and helping them to identify their strengths and realizing how they're different from each other. Um, and in fostering those strengths and in a way that is going to be best for them and not you know, trumping on somebody else, it, like a, a way of respect. My son is, He's an incredibly creative guy. He's a very funny guy. Um, he's a go-getter. He's got a great energy about him, and there's there's a leader. He's he's got some leading qualities about him, and I love that. And that's something that my wife and I are fostering with him. And then you flip it over to our daughter, and she's uh, she's like an old soul. She's got a huge heart. She's got these very wise energies about her. And when you you talk with her in a certain situation. Um, she, she can really offer some great insight. I think my kids are awesome. So I, so far what I'm proud of, and I'm not talking like a wise old owl, my kids are only 10 and 12. They, I got a long way to go, so do they. Uh, we'll see what happens. But um, I love who they're turning into. I we'll love- see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> that almost implies like, oh, maybe I won't be proud of them in five years or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll always, I'll, I'll always be proud of these kids, at least for what they've done so far. Yeah, they're amazing. But uh, it's, it's a roller coaster ride, and I love the way my wife and I have been working through it. And what it means on the marriage too. You start having these two other, or we have two kids, two beings, other people have more, three, four, five kids, more, whatever. It's, you, it's definitely starts exercising the boundaries of your marriage a heck of a lot more in communication. That's been huge for sure. Cool. Yeah. What are you looking forward to? Okay. So again, and I don't mean to be redundant for our viewers and listeners, but we are talking about parenthood, fatherhood. That's why you, you pulled me on. I want to see what my kids are going to do with their strengths. I'm going to see what impact they're going to have on the world because they're freaking awesome kids. And, and uh, I want to see how, I, I think that's for any parent, right? When you have a child and you're, you're, they have, you, you realize that your child has these other gifts that your child has to help discover and you're helping your child discover those gifts. Like, then what does that mean? Like, what are they going to do with it? Where are they going to go with it? Um, that that that's what I'm excited to see. What's the ripple effect in the light that they're going to share with the world? I can't wait. They're awesome kids. Cool. I mean, they're all, they're already having an impact. Of course, I'm not going to say that they're just off the side doing nothing, but but <laughs> it's only going to get better from here. Awesome. So, hmm. Is there anything that you're aware of that that you can help to have them flourish and thrive and be their own person? that you aren't yet doing can wait repeat that question or say it differently yeah so i'm i'm wondering with, with with all the all the the pride and everything you're looking forward to them and what who they become what they develop is there anything you're aware of that you could do to help them that you're not yet doing that i'm aware of right yeah, I'm not gonna. Not, I'm aware of. Right, because I'm you, sure you've got to be aware funny. of it to be able to. Yeah, <laughs> but not yet. No, you haven't discovered. But is there? Funny. You know, is there something that just age-wise, experience-wise, you know, you know, something you haven't done yet that you look forward to or expect to? So one of the biggest, I, I can tell you, one of the biggest challenges right now has been um, helping them have more courage to step out into the world. In I mean, their world right now is going to be their school or, or, you know, my daughter in cross country or my, my son in karate or something like that, you know, whatever their world is right now, I think it's only because it's something that I've been learning more and more for myself. And it's therefore I want to model it for them. You know, when you experience fear, but you know, you got to step out into the world and do something, um, doing that. If it feels right in your heart, but you have that silly fear that always wants to stop you. Um, I think that's something that, uh, I, I would like to somehow have them experience more or learn from or whatever, uh, probably within that realm. That's what it is right now. And it, it's going to change all the time, but that's where it is right now. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. 
Um, I really want to thank you for, for joining me today and, and thanks everyone for listening, but especially for sharing everything. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I've gotten to ask you things that happen to come up in just our normal hanging around conversations. Yeah, I know, right? yeah. And uh, I think you've got some valuable insight and I really hope this is an opportunity for you, your modeling, your, your vision and practice of what it is to be a dad, to be a man, that it can impact people beyond, beyond your children by, by showing up here today, by being willing to, to share this and be open. And because I know yesterday you messaged, you were like, eh, can we redo this some other time maybe? Yeah. And, uh, and, and that to me means like, nope, means, that means tomorrow's the perfect totally time. Fair. <laughs> totally fair. You know what? I love you for the fact of, of keeping me on this. No, um, Andy, this was, this is awesome because, you know, I hear some of the speakers you have and some of the really awesome topics they have uh, on your show. And I'm like, geez, like, and you wouldn't tell me, you wouldn't tell me why you were pulling me on, which is, I think it's cool that you did it that way. Like, man, I said, why? You asked me to be on here. Yes. Again, like I said a moment ago, like there was a sense of fear. I'm like, what the hell am I going to talk about? Like, what, what, what could I share that's going to be helpful to somebody else? Um, but I'm glad you did. And I would hope at least one person hears something from this, either, you know, man or woman, mom or dad, whatever. And maybe they take away at least one thing. But it was nonetheless, it was just a ton of fun to be on here and uh, be on your show. It was an honor. And I, I thank you for having me on here. And I think what you're doing with this show is awesome. The, ta- the, the title of Real Men Feel and going into that category, which is a door I think that's been shut for some generations within men. Um, I commend you for that because you know, you're opening up a door here that I feel like has been shut for a while. It takes a massive amount of energy and I could only imagine the amount of impact that you're having on others in, in by creating such a space uh, for healing for guys, for, for progression, not just for guys. Um, I would be willing to say that perhaps healing for some of the females as well, maybe some females who don't see a lot of guys in a pleasant light. Um, you know, hopefully this could be some healing as well for them as well. So awesome. I commend you for having the show and I thank you for having me on. This was great. Cool. And uh, thank you for stroking my ego so beautifully. And <laughs> is there any way you well, want to share uh, for people to reach out to you, get in touch if they want to follow up with you or if they're looking for a chiropractor in Massachusetts or? Yeah. I mean, if anybody has any questions or anything that we've talked about, um, I mean, if somebody wants to reach out by all means, you can, uh, I'll give you, I can give you the email to the office, my office email. It doesn't have to be office related, but it'll it'll be a great email to get in touch with me. Um, It's info at cornerstonefamchiro.com. So cornerstone, C-O-R-N-E-R-S-T-O-N-E, fam, F-A-M, uh, what I say, Cornerstone Fam Cairo, C H I R O dot com info. Yeah. We, we will make sure that's correct, and it'll be in the show notes <laughs> at realmenfield dot org. If uh, you're in the middle of a drive or workout, and you 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 know, I I must send a message to Dr. Tim, but I can't write that down right now. So that's uh, fine. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'd love beautiful. to hear from anybody. That'd be great. Cool. And uh, so again, thanks for your time. Thanks for your insights. Thank for you for your open heart. Thank you for your building of a great family. And thanks everyone for listening. Um, wherever you're discovering that real men feel, that, that men have hearts, that men can be open, that ah, there are so many different ways to model masculinity, to spread them to the world. Um, thanks for joining us. Give a like, give a share, tell someone about the show. If you have suggestions of who should be on, get in touch with me. Uh, visit us at realmenfeel.org. Send us an email. And uh, wow, until 2020, have a great day. Have a great life. Have a great holiday season. And always be good to yourself. Thank you for listening to Real Men Feel. Reach out to us at realmenfeel at gmail.com. Learn more about Andy Grant at theandygrant.com. Until next time, visit realmenfeel.org or the Real Men Feel Facebook group and share what you thought of this episode. Please give this podcast a review on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you are discovering Real Men Feel.